Hi, my exquisite listener. It gives us great joy to come your way today. We are pleased to welcome you to Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. This is Daylight Magazine. On today's program, we have life experience, life songs, and the moment of truth. I am your presenter for today's program. My name is Jeffrey Agbodo. It is now time to listen to a delightful song.
even as we seek your face, help us to see you and to know you better. This is what the song says. You are kindly hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. Throughout life, man has gone through different phases of realities and experiences. Out of these experiences, the Christian is drawn closer to God. To draw lessons from Christian experiences, sit back as we present to you Life Experience. Hello, my wonderful listener. You're welcome to Life Experience. I am Papa Kwamuna. I was having a discussion with Mustafa. He was actually sharing his life experience with us. He is going to continue from where we left off the other day. Because the one-party system has it's left. Now, yeah. Yes. So everybody was happy. And then we thought things would be better with military handling things. I personally thought things were going to be better. Usually is worse. But no, <laughs> we are disappointed. And so Valentine Strasser was taken over by internal difficulties and he also was toppled by his own colleagues and the colleague who took over valentine strasser was supported mainly from the southeast Mm -hmm. and the one who was toppled Mm -hmm. strasser was creole backing Mm -hmm. mainly in the west yeah not from these provincial settings but he had political backings from the north the apc the former party so there was this tussle in between now when the war finally came onto us from the east the ruling party then Said, no, this one is tribal issue. They didn't treat it as serious. So it was regional palaver and all these yeah. things. But when they got to where they, they felt that the war was not a tribal issue, it was mm-hmm. actually eating okay, into the yeah. economy. Yeah. It was too late. Mm-hmm. By now, the military was divided. They were not happy with the handling of the war. When the war is in the east, the military, we say, no, it's Eastern business. Mm-hmm. But when the war touched on the north, and then it became national issue. Mm, okay. Uh-huh. So much of the logistics to the north yeah. will be serious. Yeah. But the logistics to the south, south and the southeast will be cut down. Okay. And that gave birth to the local militia, the Kamajos. Okay. And so by now the war intensified. It became not only military rebel, it became rebel military and mm-hmm. intermilitary fight. So it was so bad for the civilians. But um, somehow, regional support, internal battles uh, paved the way for intervention of ECOMOG and, and things started settling up. Before ECOMOG, Liberia's war was now going okay, down. Going and Chancellor didn't like ECOMOG coming to base on our territory to fight him. And so he publicly went on here, BBC, that we would test the bitterness of war for hosting the ECOMO. The ECOMO. And so that's the foundation for actually our war. So the man who was disgruntled in our area was Fode Sanko. He wasn't a, a high military ranking when he retired from the army. But somehow he still had the bitterness because he suffered a little bit during one party government, a little bit. Mm-hmm. So he had a grudge against APC, the All People's Congress. Yeah. With his grudge and Charles Taylor's bitterness, mm-hmm. they could make good friends. Yeah. And so they made good friends right away. So he got arms. How he got the arms is today an international uh, concern. <laughs> yeah. So we don't know much about it. We are yet to know. But he, however, got arms and started taking the east, where the diamonds are. And with Charles de Law's advice, he concentrated in the east so that he would get the diamonds, and that's the way he would fail the war. So that one became... Basically, they were exchanging diamonds for ammunition. Yes, clearly. They, they, that was demonstrated. Yes, by later development, they were exchanging diamonds. And, um, and now, with this kind of development, Charles Taylor also wanted to remain president. Yes. By now, he had been president, and... He still wanted to be president. But there were a lot of things he needed to take care of. He knew the Sierra Leone issue would come up. He knew it. So he started destroying the evidence. He started killing most of the people who worked with him. He started killing them. And so they started knowing that, no, he's a betrayer. Okay. Yes, so they started cutting up from him. And that's how they became independent rebel group, the RUF. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, as a young man, did you partake in a war? Because I hear they, they took some child soldiers and what have you. Were you a part of, 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 of mm. any of their no. factions? No, I deliberately refused. One of the military leaders then was my brother, Tom Numa. He was defense minister. He went to our place and waiting for all these years without schooling, he said, man, what are you waiting for? Come to the army and do something. But by then I've gotten the Christian consciousness. I started thinking about a lot of things. So I said, no, it will not work with my religious conviction to carry arms. So I, I refused to carry arms. And that led to a lot of uh, victimization on the ground. There were these militias. If you don't go out, they will see you as a rebel. And you can be killed at any time. Many people lost their lives because they didn't have clear identity. So I kept moving from the far east, Kenema. I moved to Bo. From Bo, I moved to Freetown. But when it was there, the rebels finally met me. And I didn't have anywhere to go, so I stayed there and suffered all that the war brought. But I didn't carry any arm. I didn't take anybody's property. And I didn't speak against anybody. In other words, I didn't take part, any party. Now, what, what are some of the things you suffered? Uh, the, the most important one is the war contributed to my deterioration in education. I needed to be educated faster because being the, the first educated person in my family... I needed to be educated faster so that I would catch up and help my mother and my older sisters now to help them realize some benefit. But I couldn't, and that pains me t up till now. So the next one is, as a result of my refusal to take sides in the war, I somehow victimized. When the soldiers come, they will call you a rebel. You need several identifications to free yourself. I was quite built up during this non-educational activities. Mm -hmm. I was doing bodybuilding and I was okay. quite huge and yeah. quite attractive. So one time I went for some work in Bo from Freetown. The war had now died down. We are now trying to reset it. And by now I had gotten employment with the Seventh-day Adventist Church as a lay evangelist. Mm -hmm. So when I went back to Bo after the war, the local militia there saw me as a soldier. Mm -hmm. The military had been disbanded. And so when they saw me, they said, this man will be a soldier. And so he is a rebel as far as our territory is concerned. And then I started saying no. I was speaking Creole, but being local militia, they came from the forest. They didn't understand the Creole very well. And so we had communication barrier. Mm -hmm. So they misunderstood my resistance for you defiance. Rebel, yeah. And so they said they will beat me up. And I said no. Before beating me up, you take me to your leader so I can talk with them. It's been really wonderful listening to Mustafa's experience. I hope you are blessed. A continuation will be brought to you later. I am Papa Kamana. You are currently hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. AWR, Voice of Hope, we will bring you joy, keep hope You've been listening to the Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we have discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on plus 233-307-051-058. If our line is busy, don't give up. Keep trying, for we are expecting your calls, emails, and letters. Great is thy 
faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter. Springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy grace. Mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today. And bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. But God, all things are possible. And without God, we can't achieve anything meaningful. For this reason, it is prudent to listen to and apply the Word of God in our lives. Please let's listen to the Word of God on Moment of Truth. and gentlemen you are welcome to moment of truth today the caption for the sermon is hindrances unanswered prayers shall we pray our father in heaven we thank you for this privilege given us once again it is my prayer that you will teach us how to pray it is my prayer that you would always answer our prayers and make our prayers the way you want them to be so that you will answer them for us in Jesus name. Amen. The memory test once again is taken from Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1. Let us hear the word of God. Surely 
The arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. This is the word of God. Amen. My dear brother or sister listening to me at this particular moment, the focus or aim of this sermon is to help us arrive at how our prayers would be answered by God. The Bible says that even our righteousness is like a filthy rug before God. And at this particular moment, I want to make the point clear that it is only Jesus Christ who can better what we say so that God will answer our prayers. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 says, Come unto me all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But the obvious question is, why is it that humanity have this promise and yet our prayers are always blocked and yet our prayers do not ascend to God? This day I come to present to you what prevents our prayers from being answered and also what we can do to let God answer our prayers. Reasons why our prayers are blocked. Reasons why our prayers are not answered. One, a sin. Let us open our Bibles. If you have your Bible with you, open to Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2. But your sin separates me from you. This is the word of of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 and 10 talks of our sins separating us from God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21. Sin will hinder our relationship with God and for that matter God will not answer our prayers. God says that if you are going to pray then you think of maybe hurting your brother then go and confess your sins before you come to him in prayer. Sin will separate us from God. Sin will not let our prayers ascend to God. Number two, failure to forgive others. Mark chapter 11 verse 25 and Matthew chapter 18 verse 34 says that when we pray and we realize we have sinned against a colleague, then we need to ask for forgiveness. God expects that we are in cordial relationship with our friends. Because you cannot hate your brother and tend to love God. This is impossible. And for that matter, before you pray, remember that you must ask for forgiveness from God. The Lord also expects that we forgive each other of our sins, else he would not forgive us our sins. And for that matter, it will create a gap between us and God, and our sins or our prayers will not be answered. Another reason why... Our prayers are not usually answered, and for that matter, a hindrance is unbelief. This I term as lack of faith. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 says that when we pray and believe, then God will answer our prayers. However, when we pray without believing, it is just like saying, I have prayed, but I know he will not answer. This is lack of faith. It will, however, be prudent that Christians ask for faith from God. Anytime you want to pray, tell God, God, increase my faith and help my unbelief. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And without faith, you cannot believe God. And unbelief will not let God answer your prayers. Unbelief will create a gap between what you are asking And the devil will capture your ways and God will not answer your prayers. But I know we serve a God who is always willing to answer our prayers. Another reason why our prayers are not answered is impatience. At times we rush too much. We use all sort of words. Father, Lord in heaven, I pray that you would answer me now. But you do not know the purpose of God for your life. God knows what is good for you. And at the appointed time, he would bless you. He only needs you to rely upon him, as I've said. But we rush, and for that matter, we think our prayers are not usually being answered. Impatience will not let our prayers be answered. Can we rely upon God at all? My dear brothers, yes, we can rely upon God. Reasons. Because he did it for those of old, he can do it for you. Faith of our fathers living still, in spite of dungeons, fire, and sword, God can still do it for you. Number two, God never changes. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. He did it for Israel when they crossed the Red Sea. As Exodus chapter 
14, verses 13 and 14. He did it for Israel when they went around Jericho seven times. Josiah chapter 6, verse 1. He did it for Joseph when all seemed hopeless. He healed the woman who bled for 12 years. He can do it for you. Ladies and gentlemen, just trust in God and he will do it for you. The only question is, we must not sin. We must believe. We must have faith. We must be patient and rely absolutely on God. And he would bless us abundantly. My dear brothers and sisters listening to me, God is always ready to answer your prayers. Rely upon him and he would answer in Jesus' name. Father Lord in heaven, we thank you for this privilege that you have shown us how to pray and how you would answer our prayers. It is my prayer that you will solve all our problems for us in Jesus' name. Amen. This message was brought to you by Yakubu Ishmael Hakim. Thank you. are currently hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. A-W-R, Ghana, Voice of Hope. You've been listening to the Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we have discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the Internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on plus 233-307-051. 058. If our line is busy, don't give up. Keep trying, for we are expecting your calls, emails, and letters. Today's program was presented by Jeffrey Abudu. Stay blessed. <laughs>